Hey guys, I'm in the shop here today, and I know it's been a while since I've done a video, and I've you know I've got a lot of people saying, hey, when are you gonna put more videos up? And quite frankly, just really haven't had the time. Long story short, I just got done building a big kitchen. Um, took me a little bit longer than expected. They made some changes on the way, but we got it done. Everybody's happy. I got paid, so we're all good. Um, but the one thing I don't know if I've ever showed in any of my videos, and I probably didn't because I was probably embarrassed by it, but I don't think I've ever showed as far as how I used to drill shelf pin holes, and um, I don't have it around here anymore. I think I retired it, but I used to use a plexiglass jig that Rocklers had put out. It was a piece of plexiglass that had holes drilled in in a shelf hole pin in a, in a shelf uh, shelf pin hole pattern. That um, holes are a little bit bigger than a quarter of inch, or probably three eighths, and you used a special um, kind of a, a Vix bit type bit that had a self-centering sleeve around with a big spring and interchangeable bits. You could drill a quarter inch or um, five millimeter shelf pin holes. I uh, used that for a long time. That's I probably went through probably ten of them, and uh, then this last this kitchen I did here. The only shelf pin holes that I drilled was in the wall cabinets. All the base cabinets had um, um, pull out shelves or, or pull out drawers, I guess you could call it. Um, so this last time I thought, you know what, I need to upgrade the the shelf drilling process. So what I did was is just uh, kind of on the spot at the spur of the moment. I bought one of these here. This is actually made by Craig Jig. Um, if you are a do-it-yourselfer and you just build the occasional cabinet here and there for around the home or something or some friends or whichever, this jig is about 40 bucks. It's got uh, hardened steel inserts and if I look at the back here, comes with the bit stored in the back. This is a quarter inch bit with the collar already and it just slips right into this uh, metal sleeve. There's a little wiggle room, but not much. Nothing like the uh, other plexiglass jigs. And then you can drill uh, six holes. And then in the back here also, it's got an indexing pin that is stored in the back. So once you're done drilling your six holes, you stick the pin in the last hole, and now you've got a referencing point to drill the next set of five. And the one thing that, that Craig did with these here is, um, if you can see this, there's these holes right here. It comes with a connector so you can stack these in any amount you want. I mean, you can put as many as you want together to make one string of holes. And me and I wasn't sure how well this was going to work, I only bought one. Um, these are a little expensive. They're about anywhere's, um, I got this one off eBay for $37.49 delivered to my door. Um, I've seen them a lot higher. Um, but, you know, if you shop around, you'll, you'll actually find um, a good deal. Um, like I said, if you're a do-it-yourself or building the occasional hobby cabinet or something, this might be worth the uh, 40 bucks or 35 bucks, wherever you can find it. eBay is a good place to find it. Um, but anyways, I realized that as I'm getting older, um, there's, there's a better way. And being I went to school for cabinet making, um, I started my senior year in high school. And then I uh, finished the cabinet making course a year after. And then I had about another year worth of general studies uh, just to get my uh, diploma and certificate. But, um, you know, a long time ago, you know, I went to a cabinet making class. And any cabinet shop I worked for, we've always had a line boring machine. Well, that's what I've got right here. This is the Delta version of the line boring machine. Uh, this unit is actually no longer available. They recently discontinued it probably maybe in the last year maybe. Um, I'm sure there's still some stock in a lot of warehouses someplace yet, but um, there's a couple of things about the Delta that aren't very favorable, but when it comes to the price tag, it's actually like somebody like me, for example, who couldn't justify buying a twenty-five dollars or $3,000 line boring machine. I went with a, a $1,500 line boring machine. Now, you're probably saying, well, what's the difference? It drills holes 32 millimeters on center. Well, that's correct. But there's a lot of little features in a line boring machine that if you use it day in and day out and you know use it to, if that's all you do for your whole living is build kitchen cabinets and or, or closet shelving or whichever, you want a really good reliable line boring machine. Now I'm not saying that this one won't be reliable, this one will definitely last me a while. Uh, if I get five years out of it, that's fantastic. Ten's even better. Um, Basically, one of the big differences that Delta is different compared to any other ones out there is the the gears in here. Underneath these covers, there is a set of gears. Every spindle here has a gear. Um, 
and I'll kind of get more in depth of that once I actually set it up with the new bits here and actually demo it to you. You can actually see as far as what I'm talking about. So the way it works is, and I'll show you with these two bits here. Um, let's see here. Make sure I get this right. Okay. So we have two colored bits here. We have a black bit and a red bit. Well, you're wondering, well, why are they different colors? Because they actually turn two different directions. This one turns this way, and this one turns this way. The reason for that is the way the, the machine is set up, each bit sits in a collet, and on the other side of that collet, it goes through a set of bearings or bushings, and then there's a gear on the other end, and the gears rub against each other. So when one gear rubs one way, the other gear runs the other direction. So that's why you have to have rights and lefts. Common line boring machine size is a 13 spindle. There's some oddballs out there. Uh, Grizzly's got a 15 spindle right now. Um, if you have a bloom, um, if you have a bloom hinge boring machine. You can get a seven spindle attachment for that, so you can actually do line boring with that one as well. Um, and then the next step up from 13 is actually 23. It's the same configuration, but instead of having 13 spindles, it's got 23 spindles. And then if you want to get more complex, you can go to a 46 spindle, which is basically two rows. You can drill two rows at one time, front and back, depending on how you have the two heads configured. But this is just a single single head 13 spindle lights. I consider this to be an entry level. Now before I bought this I was looking at buying brand new and even looking at for some used ones. I did find a used Ritter model. Ritter is a, a really good company for this type of equipment. Anyways, the Ritter really is kind of one of more of the top of the line USA made brands, but it comes to the price tag. I found a used Ritter that I could have gotten delivered to my door. It was like new condition. It was $2,100. It was a very attractive price. I would have spent it. But the problem is, is my shop's not that big. So I don't have the room for a big table. The Ritter table is probably twice the size of this machine. It's got the same size ahead approximately, and it's a little bit heavier duty, but the overall size of the table is just much bigger. And I thought, well, you know, if I looked at it, I could maybe see I could scrap out the table or sell the table, but the way that Ritter has it made, the whole mechanism is actually welded to that table. So I just realized it really wasn't worth it. So I looked at another new brand called Conquest. Conquest is also a USA-made company. They actually make all their equipment here in the United States as well. Uh, they have what they call a 13 mini. And it's basically a 13 spindle, and it's a small unit like this here. It's actually the table might be just a little bit smaller, comes with a three-quarter horse motor just like this one here, um, manual operation with a, a handle, and um, $17.95 delivered. Um, doesn't include bits though, so bits, you know, you could spend easily another $120 to $150 or $60 bucks in bits. Um, tried to buy one locally, the problem was is that they basically knocked $100 off, but then there's $200 freight to get it from Conquest to my door, and sales tax yet, so we were looking at almost $2,000 again, so I, I've just uh, stayed away from that. I was combing Craigslist, and I actually found this one here. Now, getting back to the whole quality thing, and I'm trying to keep this short, but I just like to rattle for some reason. The gears in here... And Delta's unit are actually nylon compared to most everybody else is actually um, hard, uh, uh, heat treated helical cut steel gears. So that's probably the biggest difference. Some of the little minor things as well is a lot of them they have an accessory to actually add some hold downs which is a spring loaded uh, plunger basically with a rubber foot. So when you pull down on the handle, that foot comes in contact and it basically holds the piece in place while you drill. Now you can do the same thing just by holding it with your hand. But when it really comes in handy, and I'll show you this once I get the new bits in here, is when you use these indexing pins. Because these pins here allow you to drill a continuous line of holes, making sure that they're evenly spaced from one set of 13 to the next. So, um, so the first thing I need to do is actually, I've already taken the old bits out as you see. And I'm going to put in the new bits. Um, if you guys buy one of these, um, I think I mentioned earlier you have to have lefts and rights. And that's what these are. And they're usually color-coded. Um, red, uh, right, red for left hand, black for right hand. Um, this one requires six 
left hand and seven right hand and basically that is all dictated by as far as the rotation of the motor uh, because the center spindle is actually direct coupled to the motor itself so if you have three phase um, which obviously it's easily reversible but if you have a unit for some reason or it's running in the opposite direction you have to change the number of bits around um, you would have six right hand and seven left hand but this delta requires seven right hand and six left hand hope you're not confused but anyways I got new bits here and I did not buy these online I actually bought these through my local sharpening service I've known this guy uh, since I was in Votech and he's done my sharpening since he's down in the cities a little bit it takes about an hour to get there but uh, 13 bits costing me $121 that's with tax and everything so um, I've seen them online where they're about 15 bucks eBay $15 a bit I don't know what people are thinking of selling these for that much but they are so I'm going to set these bits up. Um, if somebody is really interested in knowing as far as how to set the bits up, I can do a separate video on that. But this is just more so an overview and just kind of like a demo of it. So, all right. Okay, so I've got done setting all the bits. Um, if somebody wants to know a little bit more about setting the bits up, just uh, send me, leave a comment down below or send me a personal message. But it goes. it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the bits... Um, I'll have a flat spot on it and they get inserted into the collet and then there's a set screw that you snug down pretty good. That's pretty much it. And there's a little trick to making sure they're all the right height, but um, once you get that established, it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'll just show you this thing in action now. And uh, I got the, actually tested it once already. I was a little uh, nervous, but um, it wasn't working as I anticipated at first. But the one thing about the plywood that I use is... I don't know how well you can see that, but the outer core here is actually MDF, and that's got your traditional fur core um, on the inside. Uh, I like this plywood. It's more expensive, uh, but it's very consistent in thickness. It's very consistent. So if I set up the dado for uh, just a pinch under three quarter for a snug fit dado, every piece in that unit is going to fit in there. Unlike the traditional plywood where it's a fur core all the way through, um, it varies quite a bit. Especially what I was seeing, it varied um, a 30 second if not more throughout the entire run. So if you set the dado up, say for example, um, for a snug fit, the next piece you cut to fit in there might not fit at all or it might be too loose. So with that being said, with the, um, the bits, you have to use a little more leverage to break through that, that core first. So once you do that, it works very well. So as you can see, I've had a little fun here. So very nice, clean holes. By far cleaner than that Rockler jig. And the Craig jig is actually pretty clean too. But uh, this is probably by far the best. So we'll show you how this works. So basically, the way this works is, and I'll bring the can a little bit closer, but there's a couple stops here that you can adjust uh, as far as your starting and stopping point. The key is, is if you're doing like cabinet sides where you need to have uh, a row of holes in the front and back, you always want to reference off of one side first or off of one end first. So, so reference off the top or bottom, whichever you prefer. And then whatever you do, you want to make sure that both stops on the left and right side are set exactly the same. What that will ensure is, is that your holes line up with one another, not that they're they're angled so that way your shelf doesn't tip or teeter or totter or whatever you want to call it. So alright. So you can just slide it up to the stop here. A little switch up here on top of the motor and then you just basically pull down on this handle. Now this handle's telescoping and there's a reason for that, especially like with this MDF core, you need a little bit more leverage. So, all right, here we go. Let's try that again. Just like that. Um, some of the more industrial versions, like some of the Ritter models and even the Conquest, they actually pneumatic, so you step on a pedal and the clamps come down, clamp it in place, and this thing automatically moves up, moves down. Uh, but this is strictly a manual version, so... But, alright, I'm going to find another piece of scrap and we'll bring you in a little bit closer here.
Okay, I wanted to show you one thing here. In order to get this other side of holes lined up correctly, I have to use this indexing pin as you see in the left of your screen here in the upper left hand corner. I want to get this rest of holes to line up here and because I'm going to drill 13 at a time I actually needed a reference spot. And that's what this pin is for. This pin is designed to self align in a pre-drilled hole that you've already established with your first set of holes. Okay, so I just basically push that in there like that there, make sure it's center, hold it, and drill. So now, I have, this is actually the other opposite end, this is actually the end I referenced from. So now I have a set of holes evenly drilled from starting at the one end all the way up and uh, they should be perfectly even with one another. So that that's what this, uh, I'll go back here to this indexing pin. We'll show you this side here. So whenever you need to drill more holes, like in this case here, basically use this pin and this pin will basically, because it's got a cone on it, it'll actually line up. And because it's perfectly in line with the spindles, it'll automatically center itself. So just basically push it in there. And this is actually now, if I would have gotten the general or if I would have gotten the conquest with the optional hold downs, by the time I grab a hold of the handle here and just pull down, there's hold downs here to actually be putting pressure in here to keep it from moving. But right now you just basically have to hold it with your hand. And that happens too with this here popping around. We usually just kind of push it in there a little bit, give it a good tap, and then go down. So, so yeah, that is basically how the line boring machine works. It's definitely a new tool for me. Um, I actually have another tool in the back of my truck yet that I'm not able to get out by myself. I'm waiting for uh, a buddy of mine to give me a hand. Uh, I'll do a separate video on that, but that is actually a uh, hinge drill or a, a European uh, hinge drill and insertion machine, which is, um, long story short, fits the uh, bloom uh, hinges, hinge pattern. And what it does is it'll drill the hole and then you can actually insert the hinge right away. Um, it's actually a knockoff, it's actually a USA made product. Um, it's a lot heavier duty than the Bloom Mini Press, but like I said, once I get that set up, I'll show you how that works as well. Uh, I gotta make a stand for that. I have to do some reconfigurating in the shop here for that, but basically I took uh, this uh, stand here that this is sitting on right now, it's on casters, so I can move this around where I want it. Kind of got a designated spot for it to park it for home. But uh, I've got to make another one of these stands for that hinge boring and insertion machine, which that thing weighs probably about 250 pounds. Uh, the Blum Mini Press does not weigh that, nowhere near that. But once I get that out and set up, I'll do a separate video on that. I picked up both these machines from a cabinet shop liquidation on, on Craigslist, and I was very pleased. All right, guys, that'll wrap up this video. I hope you guys liked it. I apologize for it being a little bit lengthy. It was just supposed to be a demo, but I kind of got on a tangent there. But hopefully you guys liked it. And if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. Um, if I don't reply to your comment, there's one of two things. Number one, I just haven't had time to actually get to it because I actually do have a lot of work coming up here. Number two is I've had some issues in the past where um, somebody will post a comment and I can approve it, but it won't let me reply to it. So I'm not sure what that's about. So I always say now that um, if you need an answer on something or you got a question, and if you put a comment down below and I haven't responded to it, like I said, number one, I'm not able to respond to it for some reason. Number two, I just haven't had time. So if it's something you really need, uh, if you need more urgent attention to or a little bit faster turnaround, uh, don't be afraid to send me a private message through uh, YouTube. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching.